Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video, I'm going to be showing you um, a GUI way to access your, to, inter to interact with your LXD uh, instance, okay? So, a couple of subscribers asked me if there is a GUI version or a GUI tool, a graphical user interface tool or a web-based uh, user interface to interact with your LXD containers. So, I've tried a few of them and I'm going to show you one of them which I tried and looked promising, all right? So the uh, the GUI the tool that I'm going to be using is called LXT GUI. There are a couple of other uh, community projects in GitHub, but this one looked very promising and it, it had most of the functionality. It's it's just a simple tool. Whatever you do in the uh, in the CLI, uh, LXT start, image, containers, launch, um, viewing the logs, and so on, you can do it from the uh, from the GUI. For those of you who prefer using a graphical user interface, a web-based interface, so this is going to be very useful for you. All right. So let me launch my terminal or let me launch my browser here and I'm going to go to LXT UI. So that's the tool that I'm going to give it a try. So adaptive scale LXT UI. Okay. So in here, let's go and look at the tags. Because I don't normally work on the master tag because when I'm recording a video uh, using the master tag um, and sometimes things gets changed and uh, if you're following this video about a year later things might have changed drastically so I prefer to go uh, to a specific tag so the latest tag as of recording this video is 2.1.3 which is what I'll be using today okay so basically uh, we're gonna be using a, a Python module uh, to install and start the LXD UI. Okay, so all we need is just grab this. Uh, I'm going to clone this GitHub repository, copy, and let me move to my play directory, which is more, which is where I do most of my stuff. Okay, so once we uh, go into the um, okay CD LXD UI, and if I do git tag, so version 2.1.3. Git check out version 2.1.3 get status okay so we are in version 2.1.3 tag all right so what are we going to do now all right so if you follow the uh, instructions in this github page uh, you can either uh, run these commands directly on your machine or inside a python virtual environment so you need to have python and as per this documentation the requirement is to have python version 3 and there is the instructions here for the required prerequisites so obviously you need to have LXD running. So I have my uh, LXD uh, running up and running. Um, so please follow my uh, earlier videos in this series if you haven't got LXD environment set up. So and then you need to have Python 3 and then uh, uh, the virtual environment. All right. So um, OK, which Python? So I've got Python. Python minus minus version. So I've got Python version 3.8.2, which pip user bin pip pip minus minus version. So I'm using pip version 20 on Python 3.8. But because I'm going to test this tool, I don't want to mess my system with all the uh, dependencies that this tool is going to pull. So I'm not going to use pip or Python from my system here, but I'm going to create a virtual environment. So if you want to use Python virtual environment, uh, I'm on Ubuntu machine, so you can do apt install Python 3 virtual n. Maybe I can do apt search Python 3 virtual n. Yes, so you've got Python 3 virtual n, but I've already got Python uh, virtual n installed. Or you can use it, or you can uh, install virtual n using uh, pip, pip install virtual n all right so i've already got the virtual environment module installed pip list grep for virtual n so i've got virtual n 20.0.25 i probably yeah i installed it using the pip module python module using pip uh, so that's version 20.0.25 if you installed as a uh, as an ubuntu package you would have got 20.0.70 so that doesn't matter as long as you've got a python virtual n module installed Okay, so I'm inside the LXT UI uh, directory, the, the GitHub repository that we cloned, and I'm going to create a Python virtual environment. Python minus m virtual n and give it a name test and let's log in. Source test bin activate. So we are now inside the Python virtual environment, and if I do which Python, okay, so it's using the Python inside my virtual environment, which pip. 
Cool, so pip is also, we are using it inside our virtual environment. We're not using uh, the pip or Python from our system. It's inside the virtual environment. So whatever we do, uh, once we are done, we can just delete this test directory. Everything is gone. We are back to the clean system. All right. Okay, so if I do a pip list, okay, so it's bare minimal, right? So we've got only like three packages, um, three modules installed. All right, so the next step is to, um, We've done the source cd to lxd UI. We are in that directory. So Python 3 setup.py install. So that's going to pull all the dependencies, all the dependent Python modules that is required for this LXD UI tool. Okay, so Python setup.py install. All right, the command completed. It took um, 18 seconds. And now if I do pip list, so it should have installed, yeah, it has installed all the required dependencies and we've got the, uh, we are interfacing uh, with LXD using the pi LXD module here and there should be LXD UI, yeah, there's LXD UI here. So now if I do which LXD UI, that's inside our Python virtual environment. So all we need to do now is to start the web interface, which is done by the command LXD UI start. All right, cool. So as you can see here, LXD UI started and it's running on the local host. Uh, it's it's actually running on all the interface. You can also access this web interface from any other machine in the same network and it's running on port 15151. So now we should be able to browse to this uh, address. There we go. And the default username and password is admin and admin. Cool, okay. So that's the interface that you get uh, LXD version 4.2 and the list of containers. I don't have any containers running. And if I do, let me open up another terminal, LXA list. So I don't have any containers running. That's what you see here. All right, so list of images. I've got two local images, Ubuntu and CentOS. I previously started a CentOS uh, container and an Ubuntu container. So that's why you're seeing those two images here. Again, LXA image list. So you have these two images, Ubuntu 18.04 and CentOS 7. And you can also search for images here. For example, if I want to search for Debian and probably Debian Buster. Yeah, so I've got that here. Uh, and if you want to download this image, let's say I want to download this image. So if I just click on that one, it's gonna show a dialogue and asking us uh, if we want to download it. Yes, download. Cool, okay, so now I can see under images, I've got, I can see the Debian image downloaded and if I do LXE image list here, yep, so we've got the Debian image here. So how do we start a container? So either you can start a container from the images section, so you can um, check one of these uh, image uh, which you want to start a container and you can do a launch container. Okay, so give it a name, whatever name you want to give, number of uh, container instance that you want to start uh, persistent whether it's whether it needs to be whether the container needs to be started automatically whenever you start your system so this will work only if your LXD service is set to auto start so if your LXD service is set to auto start and if you've got this option enabled whenever you uh, restart or power on your system uh, this container is going to get started automatically uh, CPU allocation memory allocation and profile you can select uh, which profile you want to attach so there's a little bit of thing that i would have uh, liked in this tool for example this profile i would have um, got the default profile uh, is selected by default but you will have to that's one extra step but that's okay if i click on the drop down and the other small glitch is that the, the, the pop-up is opening in a in a different location so it's kind of misaligned so there are these little small things that um, that got my attention okay so select the default and if you want to tweak any advanced settings you can do that here um, yep okay so that's one way of starting the container or you can always go to the container section and create a new instance and here you will be able to select one of the uh, images that you have already downloaded to your local LXD instance and you get the same options here as well Okay, so let's try and start one of the containers. But before that, let's go through the other UI elements. So profile. So I've got two profiles. Uh, you probably know that I've used, uh, I'm using the K8S profile, a custom profile uh, for my Kubernetes clusters. So this default profile comes with uh, an interface. 
a network interface and a root disk and the k8 s profile again a network interface a root disk and few other extra options here so limiting the cpu to two limiting the memory to two gig uh, and so on so that's the list of profiles you can see here and uh, here you get the option to create a new profile you can select and delete a profile and if you want you can update the profile update the profile yep so i've got this you can update the profile and you can click and create a new profile so if i go to the network so these are the list of networks and we've got the lxd br0 the uh, the network bridge uh, that our lxd linux containers are going to be using so this network bridge is used by these two uh, profiles default profile and kts profile and the ipv4 address range is that and when i did the lxd init command uh, i disabled ipv6 okay storage pool and again when i did the lxd init i chose the uh, the directory as the driver instead of butterfs or zfs and that's the location of the uh, the default storage pool okay so one of the thing is i'm not sure whether it's possible to change the default username and password so when we logged into this web ui we used the admin user and the admin uh, password uh, but i don't see an option anywhere here maybe uh, it might be a future uh, feature request or something okay so going back to containers i'm going to click new instance and i'm going to call this my ubuntu container and i don't want it to auto start i'm going to leave the cpu allocation memory as default profile i'm going to select default profile and the image is ubuntu 1804 click create all right so the container is now created it's in the stopped state i think if i click the refresh it should be started or i don't know whether i need to start it okay i think i need to start the container okay click start or you can do that from here as well no you can't all right so click on that container start okay so that's going to start the container yeah the container is now in the running state ip address now by default it shows the ipv6 address but if you refresh yeah so that's the ipv4 address type is persistent and what sort of uh, image we are actually using and so on and if you select that uh, you can stop the container restart delete the container pause unpause the containers and so on and you can click this link to go into the details of the container give some nice graphics so cpu usage memory disk network and if you want you can change the name of the container it's like doing lxc move command to rename your container it's set to auto start at the moment it's uh it's not set for auto start the profiles it's using the default profile if you want to attach additional profile you can do that so uh from here coming to the networking tab that's the ip address of the machine a lot of other useful information total number of bytes sent and received snapshots i don't have a snapshot advanced okay so you, you will also be able to make a snapshot here so if i click on snapshot whether you want to take a stateful snapshot or a stateless snapshot um, always there's an equivalent command here lxc snapshot minus minus help so you can do that's the option minus minus stateful whether you want to um, um, snapshot the the process and memory state all the connections and everything uh, whether a stateful snapshot or a stateless snapshot and so on okay lxc list so we've got that container running yes so that's uh the way to take snapshot you can also have got an option to clone the um, uh, to the the container at once if you want to tweak any of the options here you will be able to do that file manager so these are the uh, the the file system inside your container uh, home new okay i think we've got lots of options here if you want to look at the json uh, version of this container it's basically this i think this is the same as doing lxc info my ubuntu no uh, i think with minus minus verbos or something so it basically gives the same information as uh, you see it here okay so that's the json output and if you want to move the container i don't know how it actually works it doesn't give you any options uh, so basically i think it might be able to move container from one lxd instance to another lxd instance but i'm not sure you can export the container as a tar file and you can also uh, get a shell into this running container okay okay so this is our container 
and if I want to uh, go into the terminal it opens up a new web tab and here I can do LXC sorry cat etc OS release that's Ubuntu 18.04 so we are inside the running container okay so we've got the option to delete the container sorry uh, get a shell into the container so that's cool going back to the containers and I can click on that stop the container that start refresh and I can also delete the container okay so that's gone freeze unfreeze I think that's all uh, here that's all to show in in this tool it's a nice little tool there are a couple other uh, GUI tools web-based uh, LXD management tool that I haven't uh, tried yet but if I tried, if I got some time, I can give it a try and then make some videos out of it. So hopefully, I think you found this video useful. Give it a try. It's uh, uh, it's it's actually a really good tool uh, for those of you who want to use a, a web-based uh, UI for managing your LXD instance. All right, so give it a try. If you've got any questions or any comments, let me know. I'll be happy to help, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye bye.